So the reality for most of us in software engineering is that we aren't 25 year old models living in the Bay Area, working two hours a day and making $300,000 a year. What I want to do is paint a more realistic picture of what the day-to-day -day of an engineer looks like at most small to medium-sized businesses. The biggest influence on your day-to-day -day as an engineer is the management style of your company. Most of the orgs I've worked at were agile or scrum-based. This means is that we work in two-week blocks. These are called sprints, with the expectation that we try to finish off all our work within that time. Agile teams are infamously known for having a lot of meetings. There are just a few of them that are very important for developers. The first one is sprint planning. Before we start every block of work, we plan out what kind of work we're going to do within that period at a time and this is very important for developers for two reasons one is that you can see at a high level what the most important tickets are and if you're edging for a promotion you can go try and pick up that piece of work another one is that you can see what kind of technologies the company's trying to introduce in the future and you can usher yourself in to working with those and sort of learning on the job another meeting is stand-ups and these are mostly held for daily progress on your work these are great sessions to communicate to the rest of the team if you're blocked or if you have any questions. Finally, another very important meeting is the estimation session. Developers basically make a rough guesstimate on the amount of effort and time that it takes to complete a task. To make these estimations, a lot of companies use t-shirt sizing, like this is a small piece of work, medium piece of work, or large piece of work or they use a numbering system. And they're normally presented by a product manager or business analyst, or if the work's extremely technical, say refactoring some old code, it's done by a developer or a tech lead. So that scope of work I referred to earlier is normally known as a ticket or a project, and it's hosted on a project management software. Sometimes it can be Atlassian Suite, so that's Jira, Confluence, and Bitbucket or it could be on GitHub or GitLab. And now that we're done planning what we're gonna do, estimating what we're gonna do, we finally get into the good stuff, which is development. And as an engineer, you're probably gonna get a few of the following tickets. So it's going to be a bug from customer support, maybe a new feature, an internal tooling, and if you're lucky and your company's very nice, you'll get to refactor some tech debt. Now, while you're in development, you're actually gonna spend a lot of time researching before you even code. So that means reading up on the documentation in the ticket, sifting through the code, or if you're really new to the industry, and this happened to me a lot in the beginning, you're gonna spend a lot of time getting your environment up. Now that your environment's up, you understand the problem, you have a working solution in your head, I get it. You want to go and get check out a new branch and start coding. So sometimes when you're coding, it's very natural to be stuck or blocked by something that you don't really understand. And if you have a really good team culture, you can reach out to your teammates and they can hop on a call with you or come to your desk and you guys can work together. This is called pair programming and it's very popular in the industry because it's a really good way to build teamwork and actually learn a lot from your seniors and share knowledge. It's a fantastic practice and it's one of the ways I've grown the most as a developer. So you fix the bug or you've built the feature, you've written your tests, you can now push your code and get it reviewed. Comments might start rolling in from other engineers or tech leads. And these are mostly about things like naming conventions, the complexity of the code you've written, whether or not you're using best practices, whether or not you just rewrote a bit of code and you could actually use it from somewhere else in the repo. Once code review is done or while code review is happening, a member of your quality assurance team will pick up your ticket and that test that feature. It's fucking disgusting. It's at this stage, if you have any bugs, you're gonna have to go and fix it and get it code reviewed again, restarting the whole process. So for new developers, I highly recommend test out the QA tests yourself and make sure that you're not going back and forth with them because it can get really frustrating. Another important aspect of the job that's not really talked about is documentation. This can be internal documentation, so why a specific library or package was used, or why a code base is designed the way it is, or it could be external documentation to sysadmins or cloud engineers on how to get the system up and running on their environments. To sum up all the parts, your average day would probably look like a few meetings here and there, maybe stand-up or estimation, 
maybe a pair programming session or a design documentation brainstorming session. Otherwise, you should have full autonomy and control of what you're doing with your time. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you for your time. Like and subscribe if this brought any value, and I'll see you in the next one.